Hi there, and welcome to, to this new video. So this is this particular one is a request. So somebody asked if we can deal with this geometry, probably you know this once you are an open fund user, so one of the tutorial. Uh, so the video is not targeted to open fund in general, but just to show you how to reproduce and to show you also some of the problems with the native meshing tool that comes with, with open phone the snappy x mesh so what, what we're going to do here is that we are going to reproduce exactly the same domain and show you what is the difference when you use a proper meshing tool a topology based tool in this case now i will do this tutorial using an alba but you can use any other of the commercial available and you will see a, a huge difference okay in mesh quality and then when you compare also between the different tools that you're going to do in usability so particularly speaking and always very easy to use very friendly okay and this is the one that we'll use here hopefully we're going to compare with some other tools so this is off grid again okay i am probably will be better if i do it live well let's see if i do some something else live i don't know how long it will take Okay, so I haven't practiced this. I did it once and then I put it aside. So I will try to reproduce. So hopefully it will be a, a four hours video. Okay, let's see. Okay, so let's just start. So the first thing is that we want to, to create a domain, but just to show you, I already have the, the meshes here. So let me go into my computer. As you see also, I'm working with uh, Windows. I do everything in Windows. Windows succeeds in Linux. Doesn't mean that you know it doesn't work in Linux. It works in Linux. But for whatever reason, in my portable computer, I like to use uh, Windows. I still have many links to Windows. So I install Open Phone using WSL. It works smoothly, so there is no problem. So I strongly recommend it. So let me launch. Uh, okay, so yeah, I have the WSL there. I don't need it for the moment. So what I want to do that already I have here the open phone original case that I already run. I have the mesh and let, let's compare the mesh. So let's do that that comparison using Padaview just to show you what is the deal, what is what is going on there. Okay, so let me go so i have part of you here is opening okay let me disable that and let me open first the open open fun case and hopefully i think i already have open fun original i have it here and okay there i have so let me go here okay and so no that's not that's not the one i need so let me create it can you file case dot phone so this is the one that i need to open there okay so i should have Okay, I have it here. And this is open from case. Okay, so we have our geometry. And let's open because also half the mesh already generate one. Okay, but just to compare from the beginning. Okay, um, important thing that I try to get as close as possible not to to the same dimensions that we have in this snap in the open phone case so let me open a new window here this is the new case so in this one and actually let me close this case because i want to open the one with the poly that was the tetra mesh let me open the polyhedral mesh Okay, so we have bus meshes. Let me synchronize here. So probably also we're going to see a little bit 
some new functions in Pada view. I know synchronizing screen. So here we have I have my two views synchronized. And first, let's just visualize. Uh, let me visualize only uh, the motorbike geometry. So I don't want to see the this. Oof. Okay, I have all those patches there. So select everything, and there you go. Okay, so and now also in this one, I just want to see the motorbike. Okay, so see, I, I didn't use all those patches in this case. Okay, so we have the two geometers here. Let me solid color, and I don't want those two patches. And there you go. So since that, I want to show you. So this is clearly you will see this snappy X mesh, and this is the new the other tool. So you can clearly see all the differences that the mesh to your right. Now it's a way much better. You capture all the features. So see here that if we check our you know, geometry, so it's a quite complex geometry, which by the way, I, I always wonder from where is coming this geometry. For sure it's coming from a meshing tool because you have these holes here when you have the intersection from, from the ground and also the surface mesh. But I don't know from where it's coming. So just to show you that you have these zero signals surfaces, they are always tricky to deal. It doesn't matter what software you use, but even with with commercial it's always tricky, but even more trickier in, in snappy. But see that you have these holes here in the in the brakes, you no, know, in the disc brakes. Here in the in the front part, you have another hole there that you need to also capture well, all the details inside the odometer and so on. You have here the fingers, okay, look at the steering well, all the details that you get here in the back also, there are some other nasty details. All the surfaces that you, you see, the chassis and so on, these are all zero signal surfaces that I'm quite sure that you know all the problems that that can give you. Okay, so in general, it's not an easy geometry because of all, all those details. And talking talk about you no know, the, the 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 approaches using by Snappy and the one that we're going to use with with you know, is that Snappy it is a full tolerant meshing tool that is it's like a string wrap that it will cover the surface to get a mesh but it's not going to get all the details so see here that in this mesh that we hear for half a year we see all the details okay i'm not using crazy fun parameters i'm not using secret hidden options and all that it just resolving the features the topology and we're going to see and we have all those details you see there here you have this hole here okay the holes in the disc brakes and then you look at the details of the the hand okay see how well it resolves and see that in a snappy you manage to get all those details there okay so even as you get a solution and probably you will get similar souls forces and whatever now when you look at the mesh quality it makes a big difference and important here you have this very small gap here between the leg and the arm here the elbow here what it happens when you use the parameters in in, in the snap it, it will tends to merge these two surfaces okay? so likely in the snap we are going to use a much uh, a lot of refinement surface ratio and maybe will solve but you know the cost of that no it will use more memory more cells and some way more time consuming here using relative large parameters because we're using the descent and the snappy we get an excellent mesh so see that this is problematic also there and no need to say about the the boundary layer that here is you run the default cases you're going to have some layers but maybe the co the, the cover to uh, uh, on the surface is, is, is quite low now i don't recall but it's not it's not a good boundary layer so let's explore also that to take a look at what we have also <clears throat> Okay, motorbike group, pa, 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 pa. I need the internal mesh. Okay, so let me plot it there. In this case, I want the normal to. And there you go. We have our cut plane in this case. Let me put it there. And I can show there. Okay, we have, let me disable that triangulation that sometimes is a little bit misleading. Um, I think this is the auction. 
Okay. There should be a turn. Ah, no, it's here. I think it is here. That is us. This is an option to triangulate. Okay, triangulate is lost. Okay, uh, I can create the crinkle there. And this is what we have, okay? So the snappy mesh, so all the, with all the collapsing, all around you're going to have collapsing cells. Okay, it's extremely difficult. We, we have many, many, many tricks now to control that, but it's honestly, it's, it's very difficult. So see here that we have this stereo sickness. Now this is the windshield here and nothing grew there here collapsing all over the place okay so you just see in the middle part that maybe you will have the false impression that kind of is working but as you start to move that cut plane all, all over the place you will see that it's a bad boundary now let's look at here okay and this is the one with the nova let's do the same put it here So hopefully everything is going to run smooth. Nothing is going to crash. So, okay. So we're doing since live. Okay. So I put my cat plane there. Let me change here. Let me put this. And I don't want the car to show the plane there. And here, I want this suction off. Okay, and um, I can come here. I don't want. I want this. And there you go. So this mesh is a poly mesh. So it's also, I think, a little bit uh, a showing now, because many people is not familiar with this poly and doesn't know no the the advantage of polyhedral meshes. So many people is is used to, or especially people that that. That it started to use those since the beginning. Now, when they started to do CFD, it started to use OpenFun, and they're used to these XSLs, which are good, okay. But they have also problems, okay. I'm not saying that they are not good or the poly is the best one. So you need to use the right mesh type in the right moment, and any cell will give you good results if you use. You know how to use the numerics, and you get really good quality matches. But one of the things that I criticize a lot about Snap is that this transition here. So this transition is, is, is terrible, it's lethal, it will completely destroy your solution. In particular, that you are doing scale resolve and simulation less and so on. Okay, so see that you are changing from small cells to large cells or vice versa, you know, from large cells to a small one. It's a, it's a transition that you are halving you know, the volume, so the ratio between common faces and here you will add a lot of numerical dissipation so while this is far from the body it's not a problem but it will add a lot of numerical dissipation but also you have this kind of transitions when you get closer and here also you can have those those, those problems so see that all this can add you not know, some numerical dysfunction on a strange behavior so i criticize a lot that instead when you use a tetra poly or some methods that for instance i know answers flew in on have the, what they call mosaic that to avoid this this transition they put here some elements to have something smooth something that in the future also is working you know people the developer for you know I'm, I'm working on that okay so when you look at here you have those problems okay clearly it's a way much better mesh nice transition okay rouse speaking as i say we have the same dimensions and when we look at the surface a very nice mesh you already saw that but look at the the boundary layer just at the first try. Here you need to play with all those hundreds of actions that you have in the Snappy X Mesh Dictionary. Okay, it's just select the wall, put some values here for the distance or the, the layers, and there you go. You're going to have perfect meshes all the times. There are issues here that, okay, you are going to get into problems in some regions, but look at here, for instance, the baffle is perfect mesh, and here you have that covered. Just mention that in some regions you are going to get into problems that is unavoidable. So if we go here in the intersection, tire and ground, here you're going to see that you have the mesh that they're going to collapse together, now they're going to join together, and you're going to have this kind of thin cut there. And this is tricky to deal, okay? So these are unavoidable problems. So in this case, probably Snappy did it better with that because they have larger cells, didn't put anything, and probably not 
a little bit good luck here that the boundary layer collapses early and you can put there uh, a cell to, to fill this SIM cut. But here, the boundary layer is not collapsing, it's growing, so this is tricky and you're going to have some problems there. So there are techniques at the level of the geometry that you can just avoid creating all you know, these SIM layers here you know, and put normal cells there to avoid that problem or playing with some pro parameters you now to avoid you know, having you know, the boundary layer growing there. But this is it. Now clearly we can see that it's pretty much a superior mesh. This one, roughly speaking, now the same number of cells. Okay, so the count is still is lower in this one, but here we have better resolution. And one of the nice properties of this general polyhedron is that they have more faces. So at the time of evaluating gradients, they, they, they tend to evaluate better gradients if you use you know, least square methods. And in general, any, any gradient evaluation method can, can, can give you better results. So this is it, okay, uh, surface mesh, we already looked. So we're going to try to reproduce these results. So let me close this, this windows and we're working on this. The other thing is that here in open phone case, I'm going to reproduce this, this result. So let me go and open a few files here. So I need the block, me block mesh and then a snap yeah, pretty much this is it okay so so ta, 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 ta. so as you look at snappy you have like a hundred parameters there very confusing to control when you move to some other tools the only parameter is just the geometry and click in the surfaces to to to, to choose a, a cell size so this is what we're going to reproduce here we have some dimensions and now let's work okay that now that we have this starting point Let's work. So this is our geometry, and from here we're going to do everything. So we are also keeping all the information that is. Since you, you have opened that that STL, you see that you have all these patches. For us, this is not important. Okay, and actually, let me work better. Uh, I work better with an STL. Sometimes OB OBJ file uh, problems. Now those wave from pro uh, files can give you some problems. I know in this case it can give you problems. So this is the uh, exact geometry done, converted from OBJ to to STL. And just to show you that this is coming from from another tool that I always wonder what what is the tool. So this is the actual STL, which clearly you can see is a surface triangulation. I don't know what software they use, but it's a nice mesh, okay, the surface. And now we're using this to do our new mesh. And actually, in theory, you know, because Enova, it is a surface to volume meshing tool that is, it starts from the surface and then it grows the mesh to the volume. So that means it's topology based, okay, it's a very good method. We can start from this, okay, but we're missing the external domain. So we cannot do it, we need to do also external domain. But it doesn't matter because if you have the whole geometry in as, as a surface, good surface triangulation like this, it will work. Now you can grow your 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 mesh. So here I'm getting access. Okay, I click here mesh to get access to the local global meshing controls. That for the moment I don't need it. Okay, I go back here to geometry. I would right click and I need access to group list just to see my geometry. Important note talking about. Uh, the colors that you see because you have lines there okay you have the surfaces the color doesn't matter it's the user giving but the color of the lines is important that, let me hide the notes or say i already addressed that in some other video so red lines means that is that edge connected to a single surface that is not a problem it can be a buffer or zero single surface like in this case check here these are zero single surface then the yellow lines means that that line is connected to more than two surfaces. Okay, so as you check here, you will see that there are more than two surfaces. You, you have that connection. So you have this surface here, this one, and this one. Theory that is also is not a problem, but since that you should be aware of. And then you have black lines that those are the lines that we, we want. Black lines means uh, double edges. Okay, that is an edge that is connected to two surfaces. Okay, so this will give me uh, the best geometrical representation, watertight geometry, okay? So in theory, all those colors sometimes can be a problem, sometimes it's not a problem. In this case, I will ignore the colors, but some okay, occasions might be better to repair. In particular here, you will have this 
the yellow colors might be better to repair. To, to repair. But he, for us, it's not a problem. Also, there is another color, the blue. Blue means that that line is not connected to anything. So if you create a line here, it will be blue, so that doesn't change your surface representation. Okay, so that being said, that I would like to ignore all the colors. Let's work in the geometry. Okay, so by the way, I didn't show that when you open the geometry here, be careful that also you have options to do scaling. So you recall for in Snappy that you have the feature angle and those st that stuff, this is the exactly the same. So you can capture more edges. So remember that this, in principle, this is a dirty geometry. It is an STL. We don't have the topological representation like in a CAT model, but still we can extract many, many edges and lines and and see what happens. So just to show you that, open, and let me increase this angle, and recall all these lines that we have here, and maybe we're going to have less lines in this case. I actually see that we have less lines, okay, than in the previous one. So it is exactly the same feature edges, okay? So usually you always work in this, in this way. It doesn't matter, you know, the tool, but when you have these dirty geometries where you don't have no, that representation, mathematical representation of edges and surfaces, you need to reconstruct that based in that information that you have available. And just to show you that, as in Snappy here, you have the option. So you select the geometry, right click, and see that you have this option, create feature edge. It's exactly the same. So let me put on a small angle, okay? And to show you that in this case, we read the geometry and we have all the body joined together, but as you recall this geometry, you can access to the helmet and so on. But now by splitting this, okay, a smaller angle, let me put 10. See one, you can deselect this auction, but I leave all those auctions on there. We're going to extract, but also it's going to do some splitting and so on. So let's wait a little bit. So sometimes it can be depending on the complexity of the geometry, it can be a little bit consuming. Okay, here we have it. And see that this is what we have. Clearly you see way much, much lines. And see that now we have divided here and doing all the splitting. And this is the idea, you know, and just coming back when you have a real geometry, you're going to have all the edges that you can follow. And this is what we're adding, extracting more edges to get closer to a real topological representation. Okay, so, it's important to mention that the fact that we have more edges doesn't mean that we're going to get a better mesh. Sometimes it can be problematic, but you can do some cleaning. You can select the edge, right click, and you have remove. So sometimes it's possible to remove. Sometimes it's not possible. Or sometimes you remove those edges. You are going to get into problems. And just to show you, you know, now a proper geometry. Let me go here and let me go one of these airplanes and this one. Okay, I really like this one. This is a case of we're working so we have a proper cat so later yeah we're going to do this case so we created the domain and so on so this is a, a one of those validation cases that you have around by nasa so this case is a i really like it because the supersonic one is the one not to reduce the sonic boom and so on and let me hide all the box so this is a proper cat okay that they shared and see that when you have this one you have all the features that you you construct in the cat you have all the surfaces and this is going to give you absolute control on whatever you are doing okay so uh, faces and these lines that they have a mathematical representation and so on even the surfaces you have some representation there but the fact that you have the, all those lines doesn't mean that it is better no because you can have a small edges that it, it can create can give you some problems so already showing a video that but for instance this is a small edge and here probably is you are using large cells okay, that large cells cannot fit there. So the meshing tool automatically will make something smaller. So you're going to see large transitions from a small to large. So since that are not a problem, but it's better to control, okay? So you can get rid of all these edges. So for instance, right click there, remove, and there you go. You don't have more that edge. Okay, I need to hide again this face. No more that edge. And then you can select this and this, join together. And now you have that. So you can repair even here, you have you have access in Innova to the underlying 
topology to all the features and you can do some repairing. So this is the power that when you have access to, to the geometry, no need to say that you know your geometry, you can measure sense, okay? So that is the thing I always recommend, okay? Don't go do your mesh and yeah, that's so that's the end. So be, be sure to have you no know, control over your, your geometry. I know it's difficult. I know that you don't always do your geometry. In my case, I like to, to do geometry from scratch or see how I have the geometry I try to reproduce. It's not that difficult. I can reproduce this geometry. And this is now this series of video you know, where in mesh education we're working in that. So there are some other tools that you can remesh, retrangulate, extract some features that's similar to what we were doing here. But in any case, let, let's just to talk about that okay there's a lot to talk about this as I always say that yeah I can talk weeks about this and now I have my little my little corner here you know mesh machine education to talk about that so also feel free to make a request so we need to create the domain and do some repairing we have these holes there that we can close those holes so let me close the holes right right away so if you click here you select the edge so I press the the key e to select only edges or remember that here also you can choose what you want to select and then the type of selection. Now that you select that edge, right click and you say create face from single edge. And that's all. And see that the line became black and previously it was red. Let me go here. So that means that you fix that problem that you have a single edge. You do the same here. Face from single edge. So be careful that you have many auctions, so feel free to, to play and see what is the effect the auction, the, of those auctions. So I think for this particular software, I need to, to, to do more videos to show how to repair, but we'll repair that, so we're okay. And now let me create the external box. So here we have also the option to create external boxes and so on to create the domain. So in this case, I want a box, a square, a rectangle. And see that automatically it's going to fix to the minimum and maximum values of your domain. So you need some references, you have it there. And you can click there and you can just change it, okay? Manually, no visually, using this visual representation. And you can create your, your, your domain. So let me go here that we have the block mesh and we want to reproduce exactly the same domain. So to reproduce that, Okay, I think I already have the coordinates here. I took note. So we have the box, the starting point is minus, uh, minus five. Okay, and then we go to minus four. And this one is zero. Okay, then that, this probably will, it's going to be a problem. I don't recall it. if that that surface that we just created, you know, the hole that we fill, I, th I don't recall it if, if it is at the same level of zero, but let's see. Doesn't matter, it's not a problem. Just erase and go ahead. 15, four, and eight. At, and there you go. You have your external domain. Uh, let me add transparency and off you go. So we're on our way to reproduce that snappy case. Okay, so is the lines, you don't like to see the lines, remember that you can switch off and you have to use the surfaces. Okay. And that's it. We have our, our domain and now we can create groups. <coughs> local selections okay so that means they name it selection also i can select faces so select this one right click move to group and i will call it inlet i will call this one outlet i will call it this one i don't know uh, you said i call it front front this one i will call it back here we have top and here we have ground or bottom it's up to you ground okay so we create name it selection for the boundary conditions but also when you create this one also you're creating lo local groups where you can apply as well in each of these surfaces or groups you can apply 
mission parameters. And there you have your motorbike, and then motorbike also you can access different patches. And if you want, you can do that subdivision. I'm not going to do it for me, it's okay. This one, but look at also now that we're at the transparency oh, inside, you know, look at the half the pipes. I guess those are cooling and the gases and whatever. So it, it seems easy, but it's not as it's tricky. Okay, so we're done here. So the other thing that let me go into block mesh. So block mesh, we're done. We look at the snappy and we want to reproduce exactly what we have in a snappy. So just to point out, recall that in a snappy, you don't give the actual size of the, of your triangulation. Okay, meshing is a very visual process. And I think that is one of the difficulties in using a snappy that you don't have that capacity to you're just to add the actual size, like one millimeter, one millimeter, whatever. Here you have that. So while you are in geometry option here, you can select any surface. You right click and see that you have an option here, set face parameters. And here you can go and put, for instance, a value one. And you see this triangle, this is the characteristic size. Okay, so in this case, we put 0 0.1 and that will be the dimension. And I recall that it's 0 0.32 Okay, 0 0.032, the characteristic size in a snappy. And see that this is how it would be. So uh, as you can see, it's, it's rather large in, 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 in a snappy, what, what you are doing. They use maximum this one and 16 is the smallest one. So how you can get that, that characteristic size from this file. So remember that in block mesh, everything is compute in reference to the, 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 the block size. So the, in block mesh, your characteristic dimension is one. Okay, when you do this meshing, you will see that you're going to get the, uh, the size will be one. So for instance, you can check here for in, uh, ba -da -ba 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 in, well, just look at here. So this is Y that goes from minus four to four. That means that it's eight and you are all using just eight divi divisions there. So it's one, the dimension. So that dimension of one, then when you go in a snappy, when you use this refinement options, all oh, you have all those crazy, crazy options, six. Okay, so basically it is delta, how you can get an estimate divided two to the power of the refinement level. Okay, so it will be one dividing two to the power of six, and you can, you can get an idea of that size. Okay, so using six, I think it will be 0 0.066. You can do your math in your size. So here you have, for instance, the surface level, you have these two, okay? So let me confirm in my size here, you have, uh, okay, two, six. Okay. So yes, to the power of six, it will be uh, 0 0.015, something like that. And to the power of, of two, okay, I'm doing here my math. It is 0 0.031, okay? So I, I am approximating those two, okay, to 0 0.0, okay, let me show, 0 0.032, and I think 0 0.012 is the other I'm using. So roughly speaking, similar similar values okay but that is how you you get those estimates then also important you have this resolve feature angle so this is to control curvature and so on 30 degrees also I'm going to impose that okay similar and in in uh i know we don't need to deal with all all those options even if you have so many options they are not exposed to the user okay because already the parameters are, are has been <coughs> has been calibrated, you have the best parameters. Okay, so this is it, can, can, kind of very confusing. Then the snapping here, we don't deal with this because this is only used for this approach using a snapping, which is as kind of a string rack uh, method, string wrapping. Uh, then at layers and many parameters and not always it works. So see that in this case, it's adding one layer that it tends to work, work better, but it fails. So you will see that here in Innova, everything works at the first try. Okay, you get very good boundary layers. So now that we know that, um, I think what I'm missing the also that we have a density box. So you have this density box. 
okay that we need to define as well and that density box is using a refinement of four okay so saying that refinement of four will be equivalent to okay to 0 0.0625 if i did my math right okay so let's do and uh, let's work okay you have your dimensions there okay so re let's reproduce the same refinement box so let's summarize again so we're here okay let me select everything okay we're at this point we're reproducing exactly the same domain that we have in this Nappy Express dictionary okay okay so yeah before moving to the next step uh, it's important that here we need to eliminate this hole here okay so you have their face so now you select there okay otherwise you are going to have overlapping surfaces okay so or dupli or a face over the other face that can be problematic okay so I, cl I close the hole to have there no remove the black line okay and see that it's still i don't have it so that means that they are not coincident there so there is an issue there okay let me ground remove ground okay it's not coincident so i need to fix that here it's better to have it here and fix so let me select Okay, because I need to, uh, yeah, the issue is that I, uh, I need to cut a hole in the ground. This is the ground using that face that I just erased it or using the edge, okay? So I could, I, I could have used that, that face, okay? So let me select the edge. Let me select also the face, okay? And then if I right click, see that you have the option a split face at edge. And now you have this. See that you cut a hole there, the line will become yellow because now it's connected to more than two surfaces. You have this, you have this, and then you have the tire. But if I raise this one now, what sure it will become black. That is problem solved. Okay, you can have you could have done that with the surface also. You can select so two surfaces and you can cut a hole. Okay, here probably took the, the longest approach. But in any case, there are many ways to do things. So when it comes to preparing geometries there, are, or doing your geometry, there are many ways to do things. There's not a single way. Uh, boom, 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 here. Well, actually, you can project that edge in the face, then use that edge to cut the hole. So you can do, you can use more steps there. So now select there, remove, and there you go, black line. It's important that it have to be black because if it becomes red, it is already telling you that it, there is a small gap there. And then your mesh is going to leak inside the domain, outside, it's going to give you problems, okay? So you have to be careful to have. In, in this case, we only want to fix that one. The other ones, is, everything is watertight. The rest I know, well, when you visually inspect the mesh, you realize that everything is watertight. You just have that, that hole that you need to to join together with your external domain. Okay, so every now and then save stuff. So I will call it, I don't know, live session. And there you go. So now to create the density box. Okay, so those density box, you apply them directly in the mesh. So it's not something that you create here in the geometry. Even if you can do it, but it's a little bit tricky, okay, because you need to create, later you're going to understand the idea behind that, you need to create volumes and so on. In this case, it will be much easier to do it directly in the mesh, at the mesh level. So you go click here, mesh, even if we don't have the mesh, it doesn't matter. Here you have the, the different densities, okay. So for the moment, you have this, these densities, developers are working and extending this one to give the grid, the geometry, so you have arbitrary density, so. But so far, this is what you use most of the time. So let me create here, and this is the box. Same idea as we create the domain, you can just move it. So the idea is that we're going to do is you recall at the beginning, we visualize in part of you the mesh, is to do something similar to, to that you have there. So you can move it manually, select those guide points, and so on. But here it happens that uh, I already have the coordinates where you go to the snappy X mesh. So you have a starting point, okay? It starts at minus one, 
So usually you take a starting point, the lowest coordinate. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, minus zero 07. And then this one, you can put zero 01. Okay. Well, let me put it smaller. So I know it's zero. Yeah, it's zero. It, it, it is the ground. Let me see. see. Yeah. But usually I like to put it a little bit smaller. So I would put it like this. Okay. A little bit smaller. And then this is the delta, how, how big it will be. So this one will be nine. Whoops. Yeah. Yeah. 1.4, 2.5. And this corresponds, roughly speaking, to that box that is created. So this is delta. You add this one to this. So from minus 1, it will go to 8. So as you have here, minus 1, 8. OK, same here. So basically, we're matching that. Uh, we talk about that the refinement level of that one, it was level four that is something about 0 0.06 if i will recall so you can go here and see that you have there some some squares there so those represent the refinement so you change this one see that it gets smaller and in our case it will be something about this okay so properly speaking let me do the math okay is zero point six to five and the growth rate now the growth from this is small to the largest one is 1.2 okay so this is okay and there you go you have your density box and you can add as many as many as you like for the moment i don't want to see it i hide it i create it i will save and at this point we go back to geometry let's see that we created everything, we defined the box, um, we have also idea of the dimension. Now remember when you click in the face, you can go there and sex and parameters and you can have an idea. So far from the body will be one. Okay, let me put it here. Okay, you put it there, one, and then in the body, at the ball is 0 0.16 you can see it with something small there so this is a way how you can get a visual reference okay so at this point i think we're done no we're almost done so one of the important things that in analogy to what you have here uh location image that now is called inside point you need to create volumes, define volumes where you want the mesh. So in this case, I think it will work, but you need to create a volume because sometimes you can have many objects and you need to see, see in which objects you, you want the mesh inside or if you want to everything whole. So in this case, to create volumes, so you have an option here to automatically create volumes, okay? So sometimes th this requires also some, some training, just education to show you how it works. So you have all these volumes, okay? And it's a little bit confusing, so forget about that. Delete volumes or flatten. Okay, later I can explain about. But in this case, we can we want to create you one single volume. Select everything, create volume, and this is it. Single volume, you put everything, and now you have this, and it's valid to create the image. So now also I hope you get the idea why we wanted to close this hole. Because it's this close, it's not whole, and you don't have this, this, this hole here, you have a, the, a single surface. The mesh from that side is going to leak inside, and it's everything belongs to a single volume, you're going to have also mesh inside this body. So this is kind of the idea that we're doing. Okay, and as I mentioned, we could have done also this density by adding another volume here, and then you're going to have two volumes. Okay, so one volume that connects to the geometry, and then you have external and internal volume connecting together, and you need to create sh shared surfaces. So I don't want to go into details, but that is something that for very specific cases you use, but most of the times you need to do that like that. Densities are okay. So I'm talking too much, as I say. I can be weeks here, so I hope it's not going to be a super long video, this. 
Mm -mm -mm. Okay, now that we're happy with everything, everything we have the volumes. Uh, let me save. Uh, we can move to mesh. So here in mesh, remember you click here and here. So these are global parameters. Here, global local parameters, and I like to define local parameters here. Open to open this tab. Okay, I find it more intuitive here. So the information that you have here is exactly the same that you have here. Yeah, but I find it more intuitive here. Okay. So no biggie with that. Uh, so at this point, let's define this. Let's do this. So here, maximum. So remember, maximum cell size we talk about is 1. And the minimum, we say that is something about 0, 16. Recall that we compute you know, using this, this relation you know, that the minimum is the delta, the background mesh, which is 1 divided. 2, sorry. 2 to the power of the refinement ratio. Okay, so as you go here, your refinement ratio, for instance, you have a refinement ratio of four, put four there, this is one, and you get that, that characteristic size. And this is 0 0.016 is that characteristic size, okay? It's the smallest one that you are getting that information here. The smallest and the largest, this depends on curvature, so where you have more curvature, put more refinement and that curvature is defined here, 30 degrees. So for talking to the open phone community, that is the surface features. Here, we don't care, we don't need that. So we set the largest, the smallest, and this one is equivalent to the curvature refinement. So where you have more refinement, you put more. So basically this is the number of elements that you want in a circumference. So, so if you put, for instance, 36 here, you will have an element every 10 degrees, 360 divided 30, 36. In our case, it was 30 degrees. So to reproduce that, those 30 degrees, just divide 360 by 30, and you need to put here 12. Okay, so that is this will be equivalent to these 30 degrees, 12 elements, okay, in 360. And this is it, we reproduce exactly open font so this is aspect right so this grows this probably creates some confusion because this is in the actors and then you need to grow in the surface that is this one okay but if you don't put anything is the fault values okay nothing to do here the booster is the smoother here we don't need these options this is advanced stuff uh all triangles for the moment i recommend you to use all triangles because enova also have an automatic algorithm that when it detects that it can put quads it will add quads so it's very very neat features i really like that features but for the moment let's simplify things and keep everything in triangles so in your case you can do it and you will see that in some locations you are going to have quads and so on so it's very handy very helpful but here we don't need it okay then Topological mesh parameters. So just to remind you, we have to mesh methods here. Surface to volume, volume to surface. That is topological base or string wrap. Okay, wrapping. So here you have the option. So in our case, we're going to focus on this one, but if you use the other method, here you have more options. So it gets trickier. So this will be close to what a snap is doing. And here we have boundary layer parameters. These are global parameters and poly mesh parameters and so on. Okay, so for us, here, topological, as I say, the full options are more than okay. So we don't need to change anything and not many options are exposed to the user. So for us, for the moment, we want to create only the surface mesh. So the idea here is that it's a surface to volume. First, you create the surface. After you have the surface mesh, you create the boundary layer. And after you have that, you can create the volume mesh. Okay, so see that you get better control working in this way. Okay, so the idea here is that when we create the surface mesh, we have we want really good surfaces meshes. So that's why we dedicate some time to to get features, separate things, close holes, now to get that super good mesh. Okay, so I save this. Okay, local parameters also. So remember that at the surface at here we have this one. So we need to define that local parameter because we only define the global. So local parameters, uh, you can do it here or in this tab. As I say, I found it more intuitive to, to do things here. So we want only in the motorbike. So motorbike, you have a maximum size that is 0 0.32. Okay, so it's the power of five and 0 0.016, the other one. 
this one also you can put it 12 here so as these are global usually a global i like to put this one 18 okay and then locally apply this one 12 and that's all we're ready to go uh then also we have boundary layer we can enable also a boundary layer so let let me enable here prison and as it is done here we're going to add just one layer but here there is no need here you can add as many as you like because it works give you a good mesh on the first try all the time here the same for the ground because in the ground also we have one layer Okay, and it's a lower wall. Let's put one. So I'm not giving any parameter here. So when you get, you don't give any parameters, the default value will be that the first layer thickness, it will be roughly speaking 0 .0 0 0.2 times the cell next to the wall. Okay, so you have a cell next to the wall of one, it will be 0 0.2, roughly speaking. Okay, so it's a natural transition that is following that is kind of similar to what we have here in in in, in a snap you know we have relative sizes true and then in relative sizes true is the final light layer thickness is 0 0.3 okay so rather speaking of that formally speaking also we we, we we can go and say okay put 0 0.3 there okay but for the moment, let's leave it like this, okay? So just to show you that this will be a cedar boundary layer. Also, if you put here a value, you fix the height, okay? So by putting a value here, you are fixing the height. Okay, it's up to you, the different approaches. Okay, so we have everything. I think I'm not missing anything, so let me see. We have motorbike. Okay, I forgot. Okay, ground. Okay. Bam, bam, bam. Yeah. At this point, so we have everything defined every now and then save everything and now we can go and create remember there are three steps okay first surface then boundary layer and then the volume okay so this is the topology base this is the, the, the powerful one then you have the string wrap mesh okay closer to to to, to what is done in open and i know if i feel in the mood i can show you how it works in this one and you will see that the, the geometry is not as nicer in this one and this one that is in development this is will be properly the octree base method using a snap it's something close okay it's not like copying a snap it's not copy something else but this is a theory that already exists so it will be something like that it will create an extra mesh and then wrap everything around the body but here the uh, contrary to what is done in, in the snap is that you have that nasty transition the transition between large and small you no know, it's filled using some cells now so it's small so, but it's not fully working it is in the works but you have it there you can test it i don't recall it works in this geometry as i say i don't like this method i'm super happy with with poly meshes okay but for those who, who prefer to have excess you have that option there that hopefully it will be will be <coughs> fully working soon then also you have tetra and poly so tetra there's many people that still use tetra so in particular now those using these continuous gallery methods and high order meshes those works in tetra so this is the kind of measure that you use also it is in development to have high high order meshes okay for the moment you have it but the idea of having the tet and then enable the, the action for high order meshes okay so in our case <clears throat> we can use all these methods so let's do the, the mesh so remember you we're going to click here be, be careful to choose here through face mesh only if you put any of this it's going to do everything okay you can do all you can sweep meshes also so if you identify regions where you can use sweep okay you can start to do some sweeping faces and so on so advanced actions i'm not going, going to talk about that so let me click here it's going to start to do just the surface mesh let me right click here in this tab also and there is here an option called messages uh, pa -pa 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 -pa. here i have it and it's going to give you you know the output no like the output you, you have in a screen when running in the terminal so you can see about what is happening but we're going here we're working at the meshing level okay and there you go you see that it was quite fast triangular mesh see that it managed to capture that box there very nice mesh nice features 
nothing to say here so now let, let's explore what we have so if we go here in group list, uh, group list we don't access any more geometry now you have the mesh here so you can hide from back inlet outlet and top there you go very nice so see that that hole there well resolved if you use the string wrap method or in, in snappy also it doesn't manage to resolve that the baffles perfect baffles okay so this is this is a good mesh let's say, or a good meshing tool look at the fingers the gaps there what i was talking about that in the geometry when you have short edges this might happen no so it will try to to use the smallest size that you define globally okay which is this one just to resolve everything because there you have some features now so if we go back here and let me show the geometry see that here you have these two edges here that are very close wow uh, i will see here okay and that's why you have that those small cells there so you go back here this so what you can do here probably eliminate one node or merge it with something and sometimes there is nothing to do the old the other option to do is you need to defeat or the geometry and when you defeat or you get those horrible results that you have in in snappy but as you recall it's snappy that you didn't resolve this we already saw that that at the beginning see that everything is perfectly resolved Okay, this is what we want. Okay, this is what we're aiming, perfect meshes. And it can get much better if I reduce this parameter because this 0 0.032 on as is a little bit large. Okay, so it's just, you just need to half this and half this and you will see that your mesh is super beautiful. Okay, so here you have this, probably you can do some repair there. You, okay, so just to mention also that you have many options to do surface to repair the mesh at the surface level okay so i'm not going into details i don't want to mesh around but you can repair you can select there and repair many things divide smooth the mesh okay extremely powerful okay since that you don't have any snappy those options okay and this option now to visually edit your mesh also you, you didn't have it so explore always explore your mesh okay inspect your mesh just to be sure that you don't have any strange behavior but here everything is, is perfect and look at that here this is where usually you're going to get all your problems here okay when you have the boundary layer the low quality cells will be i know already know for experience also always happen there here also see the bed here you are if you are going to grow the boundary layer see here that this here you are going to have your problem so you visually inspect the mesh easily you will see where you have those cells here also you're going to have back quality cells and so on but we're happy with the mesh the refinement zone work also fine so we can save this one so similar to 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 what you do also in a snappy that you save intermediate steps you can go like this i save my surface mesh and then this is my starting point to the next step so the next step is boundary layer you do your boundary layer, you unlike your boundary layer, reopen the surface mesh, and that's all. So sometimes doing the surface mesh, in this case, it wasn't that time consuming. It was like a minute, I don't recall. So just to save that time, open the previous case, the surface, or this one I call it surface, and then redo the boundary layer, okay? And I, I need to do something else. I, I, and doing, this is also not because I want to compare to, to open phone. So I'm doing many analogies to snappy, but just to have it clear in your mind that snap is not the tool to use it's something better in this case you know so probably it would be better to use the opposite that snap needs to do this okay but be careful about that well because i'm doing the analogy i want to do that analogy and comparing but it's not the the perfect tool of snappy okay so our next step that we're happy with this okay also you can check the quality so here you have the options to check mesh quality and so on so you can check orthogonality or non-orthogonality how it's called in open phone uh, but you are going to get everything at the surface level but you see that your surface mesh is almost perfect okay you have excuseness almost perfect excuseness aspect ratio sometimes this might be a little bit large you know, as you have very small meshes but surface mesh is, is, is perfect okay nothing to do there okay probably you have these quality cells 
okay this quality parameter so if you select this one okay so below zero one might be something that it can create problems when you do the volume or, or the prismatic layer so you select there you click 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 here and show and it's going to do this diagnostic and here you have the cells and you can visualize those cells okay let's see where, where do you have those cells so already see one cell here there you have one cell so that one it was somewhere in the motorbike here okay but you say oh but that is, that is freaking difficult to find just right click here find a small entity next and automatically will go there to those entity okay and there you go you have it there there is another entity and there you go this one it is located somewhere here i see then but it's here where you have oh, you get the idea that oh, okay i have those bad quality stuff but it's not that bad you have it there yes use usually the solution in meshing is finer meshes okay i think uh, already one hour we're here i don't recall i don't know at what time the i start anyways okay so i show you this diagnostic we don't need it anymore and now let's do the boundary layer so this is the cool part so remember that we're growing the boundary layer just in the motorbike in the green surface and the in the ground here you enable so you're going to see the boundary layer only there so let's go and run that so you click here only boundary layer here you can get uh, your message right what is happening so remember that we added one layer okay so let's hide that we don't see it there but we need to add a cut plane yeah click there so that i want that cut plane here normal to that extract and there you go a perfect boundary layer all the time the first time so this is something that you don't get in a snappy okay so here is collapsing just to to to, to enforce no quality metrics and so on but as, as i say you may find a measures you are going to get there so this is something that it is impossible in snappy uh, oh you're well aware of that as i mentioned your problems quality problems a lot of you're going to have here okay it's where you're going to have all those problems to mention also here in the belly you see that you have those cells there here also but it's a perfect mesh and i'm speaking whatever you put this cut plane you're going to see it's almost 100 percent coverage okay so as for the surface now we have something volume you can check the orthogonality and so on so see that you have some large orthogonality here 81 is still acceptable in open phone i know precisely what there are so let's go here let me select show Okay, I have grid list and then uh, let me have motorbike. Oh, the cut plane also, I don't need difficult. So, see that as I mentioned, all around the wheel you have those problematic cells. Here also, I think this corresponds to the belly, to the body. I said, yeah, somewhere here. Okay, so you clearly identify, you easily can identify there is something wrong also here, it appears. I know it's not there. Everything is just here. So basically you can identify all those cells and the solution there will be just doing finer mesh maybe or probably some splitting at the surface level to avoid growing that or, or forcing not just having their uh, tetra or poly but it's not a big deal okay so you can go here you're happy with this save as and then you go bl now you have the boundary layer and from this you can move to the next step that is growing your volume mesh i'm not going to do it here let me go back to the surface mesh okay and just to show you that i told you that you always get good meshes the first time first try. okay let me go here and let me go and let me put at here in the motorbike six layers okay the the values as you see you can have independent so you put six here one 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 here and different so there is no problem so you have absolute control okay and every patch that you create the groups that you create here you can access that those there but also you can apply to 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 groups 
different sizes or no groups you know to surfaces that you didn't define here at the geometry level you can apply also different sizes so you already see here one single layer okay so it's working fine i don't want to see front and back okay so over there and now let's put the cut plane there here here and there you go clearly you see that you have some parts that it's not growing completely because there are some quality parameters and also the, 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 the <clears throat> all the definition minimum maximum size so the boundary layer stop to grow when you reach you know the maximum volume or probably you have some interference with another surface but there you go so when you do in this case when you do the boundary, the volume mesh you will see that here you will going to have back quality cells okay so this is another advantage doing you no know, this is pre bl you have two techniques to to do the boundary layer pre bl or post bl now pre boundary layer post boundary layer okay or pre surface meshing so in this case before growing the volume you can inspect everything and you can redo it to avoid these problems here so there are different techniques also here now when you go in global parameter how to control the boundary layer meshing auto reduction the quality base so here you just need to this is the one now that is measuring the quality so you need you, you just need to change this one now to control now all the boundary layer in base of quality but as you see very nice mesh okay first try always you get that 100 percent coverage then yes you're going to get some other problems related to mesh quality when you put the volume but yeah a little bit trial and error and you can get your way around to get the, those measures usually it's also it's a fast process so see it's still here it is 81 not that bad when you put the volume i hope you be solid you can see that this is a problem to fix volumes there so let's do it okay so let me save this one okay and let's do the volume so to do the volume you come here so first you get the, te the tetra mesh okay it's a tetra dominant okay also you can have pure tetra meshes okay but uh, still there is an option that is not exposed to the user but for instance you get this mesh you don't grow the boundary layer it will be a pure tetra in this case that we have the boundary layer it will create some, some other elements uh, pyramid somewhere here and there okay but the auction is not exposed that where you can disable that okay but it's also possible and this is talking now to the people doing this continuous gathering and that is stuff that usually they need to use pure pure tetra meshes and so so you create the tetra mesh and then as you are interested in the boundary and the polyhedra you create it here so the polyhedra is like a dual to the tetra mesh where you join and you get those tetra that is, they are really really good elements i really love tetra okay but it's a matter of trying validating educating the user but it's up to you okay so let's create the tetra so i click here and at this point we need to wait a little bit usually the tetra it, it is fast okay it run by the way everything is running in parallel automatically uh you know well, it's going to use the maximum number of cores just to mention something about those maximum number because they have a new computer one of those new processors intel's no hybrid architecture that you have performance efficiency i having problems there because you know you have performance that goes at higher clock speeds and efficiency lower but lower clock speed lower energy consumption but many applications i have seen that the operating system it is assigning that operation in parallel to the efficiency course okay so you don't get the maximum efficiency uh, i have problems here in innova it's not a problem in innova it's a problem of the operating system now so windows there is they call it threat director which is not a hundred percent uh perfect so sometimes there are some applications that start to assign that process to the efficiency core and it would run is lower but that can be controlled also no you can control the affinity there as an action so i think i will do a video on that now because for that specific architecture now just to show i think it would have been better to get an a and d that you don't have hybrid architecture so in that one i have eight performer cores and 16 efficiency core but those efficiency core are super super slow 
And yeah, using many tasks, uh, the operating system is using all these existing efficiencies and not the performance. So sometimes it happens in Innova, it happens in using some other CFD tool like Fluent and it's tricky to control, but it can be controlled. But that was a pause now. Okay, so we have the volume mesh. Okay, so here you have what, what happened in everything and you can get an idea, number of cells, steps and whatever. And let me put a, 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 a cup, right? And there you go. Okay, let me hide this one. So you have volume mesh. Okay, this nice lattice structure, that one is controlled here for those curious. You can call, you disable this one, you're going to have a more an anisotropic distribution, something like here. But I like to have this one because they're kind of aligned with the flow, cool feature, I love that. Okay, so what I will say in that, there you go, you have the mesh, you see. You didn't have to go through the whole sort and bustle of a snappy, perfect mesh, perfect boundary layer. Yes, there will be many issues in these regions where you now you they are very close the prismatic layers, so you need to put some strange shapes element there to fit that and they are low quality. Okay, I have to admit that. So I click here. So you sometimes depending on the mesh, this visualizing this can be a little bit time consuming. So like we did for, for the surface and the boundary layer, it will identify everything. So you see that you have a maximum orthogonality AC, even still for this case, you can deal with that. It will be better something closer in the order of 80. So there it will require some user intervention move here and there also Developers are working on adding a better smoother just to solve that problem, but it's not in this case I know it's not that easy. Okay, if you add any smoother or probably it's not going to do too much. Here's more user intervention. Okay, so let's see where we do we have those cells that there are a lot to handle. These are faces. No, they have faces and cells there. So let's see what what we have there. So we have triangles, so triangles, quadrilaterals are faces and these are elements and so So here we can start to see what we have. Okay, so let me hide here, bam, 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 all this stuff. I believe the girl. Okay, so I suspect that here, okay, where you have the the bottom of the right there, yeah, there, here, I suspect, uh, here, here, here. So all the regions where I was suspecting, see here where you are joining now, we're close to the elbow and the leg. Here, here, so you have it there. So now you can do, try to control the remission. By the way, at the wheel level also, and this is intersection is something that I, I was suspecting that. Okay, so let me go and hide this. And be sorry, but there are not many. Okay, I'm probably also they are not in critical regions, so I'm quite sure that that is not going to make your simulation crash in open from even if you have 87. Remember, if you know how to 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 adjust your pneumatics, there is no problem. But the cool thing, the important thing here is that you are capturing now all the features of your surface mesh, everything where we better better better. better, better. Okay, so all these holes, that is stuff that you didn't see in the snappy. You can open a snappy, you will see that this is this is light year separation. Okay, so. Okay, so this is it. Okay, cool. Um, so you can go here, save as, and then you go and you say, following, I like to do like this tetra, and you have your tetra mesh, and then you can go the next step, which is, converting to poly okay so let's do it You're still using this six layer that is more than you have in a snappy but just to show you that it always always work the first try oh but bam 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 let me remove this uh well they got plain uh, then okay so let's go for the for the poly poly mesh so we need to con to convert it to poly so you can click here directly, but I recommend you to select boundary layer because also that polyedra, when it grows, also needs to modify the boundary layer to, to get something better. So use in conjunction both options. 
this and this okay it will work if you don't use the boundary layer but if you select this one it will, will improve okay it will add another a, a step just to adapt the boundary layer to the polyhedral mesh you click there okay save this message please yes so basically starting from this what you have so as you see the boundary layer is is going to 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 modify boundary layer so it's doing some modifications in this geom geometry it needs to redo the tetra so you are redoing the tetra and then doing the dualizer or the conversion from tetra so from poly so it will be a little bit time consuming uh, I recommend is that you want to go right ahead to the poly. Don't do the tetra step that, that I did here. So you select these two options that you have there and go and do the poly. Otherwise, you are, you are repeating twice the tetra. But it's just because these options are remodifying the mesh to get something better. Okay. So it's positive in the aspect that it will be better, you know? but then negative because if that volume meshing was time consuming, well, you are redoing that stuff. Pointing out that I managed to create a mesh of 1 billion cells using Enova. It was my mistake, by the way. One mistake, you can imagine that when you sh clicking here, I, I, I click the, this, I put the, the, the wrong value, I put like 10 to the minus 5 in somewhere, and it was a, a difficult geometry, by the way. I managed to create a 1 billion cells. I don't know how long it took because I did it overnight so when i wake up the next day it was done so probably could have been eight or nine hours probably less i don't know but at, at most it was nine hours one billion so 1.2 billion okay and uh not easy geometry it was a poly mesh by the way uh, i was working with 64 cores yeah uh of a desktop a and d 64 cores and the a uh, really good mesh i was quite surprised as you can guess, it was a huge file. Then the saving the hard drive took a lot of time, but I did my mistake and it worked. So see that here you have your message. So it's converting to poly. So you have the Tetra and you can follow the whole whole history of what is happening there. And so, so let's wait a little bit here. I think let me task manager to see the the processes, so it's doing this stuff in parallel. So you can see that in this case, it's using everything. So it's doing it per treatment, by the way. So this computer is not the one I was talking about, the other that you have performer efficiency. Here, everything is performance. So I have six core, but it's hyper treating the whole stuff. Probably it's not the most efficient way. I don't know. I need to do that, that benchmarking. If it is better to do hyper treating or probably else if it's possible to disable hyper treating in Nova. Okay, but yeah, not always hyper treating will speed off your process. But you see that default will, will run in parallel. That issue with the other computer that I, I know how to do is somewhere here that is you can control the affinity. Actually, I don't recall. It was details, should be details, processes, start to use. Okay, here. So you have this option, and here you can see the process for those interested using the, 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 those cores. So for instance, let me select this one. And you go here, set priority. Now it's efficient, efficiency mode. Whoop. No, 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 da, 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 da. It was, okay, set affinity. And here you select the, pro, the, the processors that you know are the performance. Okay, so you can do it manually. You know, you launch the application, you can hear, and then you know that processor zero to four are the performance cores. You s select this one, they select the others, and it will force. So this is one way to do it. There are many ways to do it. Uh, I did a lot of search on the internet. Even I sent, sent a request to Intel because that is an Intel stuff. And they told me that probably this is the best way. You force the affinity here. There are some other ways. So I tested different approaches to have the most automatic one. But yeah, it might happen if you have those those hybrid architecture. No, that's Alder Lake, I think they call those cores. Okay, let's wait here. So as you see, as I told you, this can be time consuming. All you know, the the poly mesh.
Okay, so now I have my my poly mesh. I didn't clock that, but it doesn't matter. But there you go. Nice poly mesh, your outer boundaries. You can start to disable some stuff. Well, let me go here. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba. Uh, and there you go nice polyedral mesh so you compare with your snappy you will see that it is roughly the same dimension you don't have all those freaking problems here in you no know, in the in the baffles and here so it's a perfect mesh all the time the first try as you see no not many strange options involved very friendly easy to to do okay you go there and let's Put there the cut, the cut plane. And there you go. Your cut plane and yeah, very nice mesh. Put it there. Resolution, your boundary layer. Okay, so this kind of boundary layer is impossible to have it in. And it's snappy, uh, and as I know, I already know that all my problems will be somewhere there. And now I can go save because I didn't think getting I have something to to do later, so I need to <laughs> to stop this video soon. Uh, uh, we're going to have time to run also a few a few times uh, the simulation just to show you. So this tension when you save these files, uh, oh, I don't recall what I was working. I was working. Okay, here is this ECF. No, it's an OVA format, an OVA compressed file format. I don't recall what it stands for. Okay, so you have your mesh there. Okay, let's use this one. Let's see orthogonality, the maximum. I would expect a high value. I I wouldn't be surprised, eighty nine or something like that. No, because you have the, the, those issues that like in Tetra and probably the poly will kind of exacerbate those issues. Okay, 88, as I said, you can explore your mesh there. So let's see, for instance, from 85 to 90, but at least you don't have more than 90. <laughs> okay. But it's a problem, as I say, it's not a problem as a machine tool because any machine tool that you use similar parameters, you are going to have similar values. It is more the technique and you need to go control here and there. Likely you use, I know for a fact, because I did it, you use smaller cells, you're going to get something much better in the order of 83, 82. But I always know where you have you know, those thin cuts you now the wheel joining the ground and so on you're going to have some issues okay so here 85 uh custom where is it okay so let me i compute it show okay um probably i will have it here in diagnostic yes have it there and um, let's say for instance uh well, let me hide this Okay, so you can get an idea where you have those more than 85, close to 90. But it will be yeah, here. Oh, I think if you put a little, a little bit effort, you might be able to control those those strengths. So see here that you have so probably some refinement level. Clearly, you can see that this. Poly, look at that. The first is the strange shapes, also. That is the first issue. So, if you make this one likely finer, okay, so you have this strange shapes, you are going to solve that. So, this one will be easier to solve refinement, refining there. Here, also, same idea, okay. So, see that you have a strange shape there. So, let me, okay, so it's trying to adapt to that. So those are localized points that is quite easy to control. So you you have there your homework. Huh? See one.
try to use the same parameters and see if somebody can come to it's a good match but this wood war there is no problem no. or let's say let's see because the here the judge is open for okay fluent will digest this with no problem no, yeah, they have those numerical voodoo with star ccn also cfx now because it doesn't work with poly okay so now our next step okay uh, did i save this yeah i saved this and um, we're ready to go Let, that's more we need to, to to move now as i mentioned this you can come here export so if you're working with fluence or ccn whatever you can export it or open phone do not do it in here you need to do it somewhere else that is my next step but it's important that you need to to install open for i mentioned i use windows existing linux okay so the first thing is when you install that use ubuntu okay because the connection so far is only with, with ubuntu use ubuntu and be sure that is the default is your default uh linux version in windows existing linux this asterisk is telling you this is my default okay then i install i have my binary whatever you can say in any way but for you it's important to know the location okay so this is the location where i have it so now let's let's do the the case setup okay so to do this setup so that this is about it mesh for our purposes okay here you have this as much as too smooth okay sometimes you can you can use the series you can do some improvement but not likely set up and this is it okay so here you can set up everything, no control dictionary, the various, everything that you have in open phones you use in a nice GUI. Okay, so let me click here. So this is my computer attention. It, sometimes it can take a little bit, like one minute to open the, this auction, but it's because I mess around with something. But this is something that should be immediate. Okay, you click and you get that. Okay, but it's just my computer. Okay, in this case it was fast, but I, I'm sure that if I click here, it will take some time, like a minute, but it's my computer, okay? It's, so what is important here is models. You need to choose the, the version and then you need to give the path where, where you have that. Okay, so in my case, as I say, I need this. This is my path where I install that. You put it there and that's it. So you are telling Enova that you have install there the, the open phone and no one will know that it will reach for the default linux installation in windows existing linux okay that they have to be open to and that's all it will run so you go in main you can choose many versions or in this case you have this one so the latest version the group that's developing that that is japan in japan they also have support for for the foundation version and all versions but i'm happy with the esi you can choose your physics so let me stay with this the number of cores okay so if you have 128 whatever you put it there so in this case let me run a, a few iterations with four cores so this is access to the dictionary so you set this as you like so let me run 20 100 iterations saving frequency of 20 steady okay bam, 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 bam. let me go so this when it comes to the di divergence also it is proposing a, a very good numerics okay so these are default auctions now that is inside now already in open phone but it's the best auctions you know to deal with, with any kind of meshes okay so this is really good okay then you go here this is the application okay and here i already see that it will take some time Again, let me stress this, it, it, it is my computer, okay? Uh, I need to, to sort it out. <laughs> what, what I did wrong, I have many things. Uh, so, so I see that momentum predictor consistent. I always recommend using consistent. Uh, in this case, we know that we have some north orthogonality, two corrections there. Let me increase this one to zero se zero 007. Then you have your solvers, okay? So it's up to you, you can move there. Then materials. Okay, so here you're going to define your property. So you have access to many things, species, combustion, so I'm happy. This is okay, but let me click in dictionary, which is the, the time consumer. So you can just explore this one. You will get an idea what is happening, but just to show you where do you save this mesh, okay? So you see that this one will take time. I stress again, it's my computer, okay? Let me see what, 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 what is the problem. So somebody else having the same problem can can fix it but uh, it's my computer it doesn't matter it takes like one minute
Oh, okay, sorry. I was talking and it wasn't recording. Now it's recording. I didn't say anything. I think you get the video there for the video what I was doing. So basically what I'm saying, not just defining boundary conditions. I was trying to reproduce you know, the same case for an open phone. Also, I mentioned that uh, you, need, you need to open the, the Windows system to run open phone, okay? So doing the definition, okay, boundary conditions. So I went here, boundary conditions, now set up that. I mentioned you have access now to properties there. Okay, then Lagrian, we're not doing anything. Here, material properties, okay, you this, uh, you select you now the terminus model and so on. My initial conditions, then here's the terminus model. The definition so far now is, is, is based in terminus intensity, terminus length scale. So usually you, you have an idea of the largest scales, okay? So it's not a problem. And here, function object, I like to always use the minimum and maximum. You can create probes. So the most important function objects, you have it there, and let me compute the Y plus, and I want to compute the forces. I want the forces and uh, ta, 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 ta. let me create one object there uh, call it forces one okay so you can create multiples then right to five yes yes uh, let's use and i want to compute it on the motor bag this is okay what else nothing else you have more function objects so a lot of stuff so as you see it, it, it will expose a lot of functions not all of them because you're well aware that there are many. Then we go here, these are the FB auctions. It's not OPT for optimization, FB auctions. So here you have now the, the limiters and so on. So let me see if limit temperature, there is no, ta -ta -ta. okay, velocity damping, I don't know, this is, okay, yeah, this, I like to put this one sometimes at the beginning you can get some strange behaviors in velocity. So I like to damp, okay? And let's say that the maximum velocity, but let's put 100, okay? No more than that, put in a whole domain during the whole simulation, okay? And you have many more dampings there. Then you go here, this is post-processing. So this is just to save cut planes and stuff like that. So I see why you put it here. I don't need any of them here. This is optimization. I think I received a few requests, people that wants to do a join. You can do all that stuff here, okay? It's way much friendlier than doing with the dictionary. So probably, yeah, I think this this is deserve a bit, you know? So the user experience is much easier here. And now I go here and let me save this stuff again. So because I have new dictionary, so uh let me go and put it there, here okay hopefully with a overwrite everything that i have there so let me go back here live session okay uh, something that, that this is more windows when you are writing into that directory do not enter in the folder Otherwise it will crash, but this is a stuff Windows existing Linux. Okay, so I wrote, I know that I'm not writing anymore, so now I can enter. And well, everything should be updated now. Let's see if it's true. Okay, so I should have 20, okay, everything, yeah. Okay, probably I should have new dictionaries here. And there you go, ba -ba 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 -ba, FB auctions. And there you go, I have everything that you said. You have it there. So at this point, okay, you are ready to go. All this configuration uh, was safe. No, you need to save. When you save, all this stuff remains safe. And actually also you can copy and paste all the whole scene be, between folders and so on, between new cases. So if you have a new case and you want to copy all this setup, you just copy and paste and that's all. So there's an auction software, I don't recall, and just copy the whole stuff actually. Okay, if I right click here, uh, copy settings, and then you paste a setting in, for instance, if you move to another, you can call, call paste settings. OK, 
okay so if you want to move like that uh ba ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. we have everything and i think at this point we're ready to run okay so oh set up everything hopefully it's not going to crash okay i didn't have <laughs> i'm not following on a script so here you just go run and it's going to access now your subsisting linux so i think it's working now because it's not crashing immediately okay so see that now it's working okay so doing changing extract mesh okay so it's running now you have an script okay so i'm running in, uh, to, just to mention i'm running within Inova, but you have already the folder so you know that you can copy and move it to another folder and do it but let's do it everything within within the gui so it's doing some steps following the, this script that it has there okay <clears throat> So also this is my computer now as I mentioned, a little bit slow. I need to check why. Uh, probably I think because I'm running everything in Dropbox. So I think maybe it's that. Okay, so now it's running, it's going to, to do the, the redistribution. Okay, so it's going to follow, I put four cores. Okay, so you can change everything. Okay, now it redistributed everything and and if you want, you can open now uh, Windows existing Linux and then plot live you now the, the those dictionaries. Or right? you have all those dictionaries, and you you can visualize, or you can open that in your favorite whatever application you use to to visualize it. So text file so let me go here and honestly I'm, I am quite suspicious that okay I can go there that is my problem is because I'm running it in, in Dropbox so yeah now it's doing the renumber mesh I have Dropbox my CFD and all that motor back oh and you have live sesh so you can run also from here okay there is no problem okay i love that which by the way this is not running check mesh so let me run check mesh okay the log okay and now the solver is running and what is running, what is cool also, well, cool down some an added value. You can come here and by default, it's going to save your residual. So you can go here, plot, and you are going to have the residuals. Let me go here. Okay. Let me detach this window. And there you go. Plot. And there you go. So see, it's running, running smoothly. So let's run this uh, 100 iteration I, I put. So you need to update it. It's not on the fly. Uh, you need to update it. OK, so as you see, we managed to set up a case. They're very straightforward. OK, ba -ba -dum -ba -dum. I was here. OK, so this is my check page, what I wanted to check. So I have everything. So this is the number of cells that we have, uh, roughly speaking, 700 cells, and a little bit more than the one in the Snappy way. I think Snappy is half a million, but ba -ba -dum -ba -dum. some problems there. So I know those problems are those strange faces and so on. OK, but it's not a big deal, something that is going to make it crash. So see that there are some differences between you know, how non orthogonality is computing in Inova and open phone personal experience I think open phone tends to be a little bit more conservative so see that it's telling 84 Inova was telling 88 okay so we can go back to Inova and check check that I oh, know it's running and yeah it's running so but it was telling a higher value then excuse the seven is okay so Actually, this mesh, 
as it is diag diagnosed by by uh, open phone, it is okay. There is no no deal there. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba. We have it there, so I can go. No. Okay, so now my computer is also temperamental and running many, many stuff. Actually, also, I think that I'm running the recording application that I also use a lot of memory. So now it's becoming temperamental since it's slow. But we can check here now the. <coughs> the lock. Okay, what is running? Actually, it's running super slow. So now yeah, this is telling me yeah, that I. Yeah, I have many things running in the background. So let's wait to save just one. So it's almost reaching out the first saving frequency. Okay. So if you, at any point you want to stop this one, okay, there is no, no formal stop button, but you just close this window. Now be careful, do not close this, this window. If you close this one, it will stop everything, okay. So that will be your, your stop button. Okay, so you move. Yeah, actually, I think it, it is. No, uh, 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 no, this is not moving. Why is it moving? Okay, a lot. Okay. Okay, so see that my log file, you have everything your function argument, residuals. Okay, you have forces, the Y plus, the Y plus should be, should be 20. Okay, here you have your Y plus minimum and maximum value. So yeah, okay, probably, yeah, the, well, I'm not interested in the thought. Okay, I just in motorbikes. Yeah, it's contained, it's a wall, wall modeling. Okay, and I don't know why it's not updated and on the fly because this one now I should be but, 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 but if I plot here, yeah, in 34, and this tail is not tail minus F. Ah, no, 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 yeah, it's true, it's true, it's true, it's true, it's true. Okay, so if I go tail my surf. Okay, let's do something. Okay, I don't know what it's on. Well, it's not a big, big, big of a deal. Bam, 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 bam. I can use less also. Let, okay, let me go. Okay, let's do something there. Okay, so for instance, we, we, we are running, we have a solution. I don't know what is my problem with this, but in any case. And okay, 40. I can visualize this one. So let me go here, part of you. Okay, so later when, when, when we start, like. We can use the internal post processing. So it's based in BTK, part of it is the same stuff, but it tends to be a little bit faster because it doesn't load the whole mesh. It will just load the, the surface patches. So when loading, it's much faster. Okay, but it's not a, as flexible as the, the uh, part of you, you know. So if you want to do advanced stuff, uh, my advice is use part of you. Okay, so let me go. This case is here and yeah, now my computer is it's very slow okay and running many processes okay ah oh, no it's, it's 
Okay, here, here. So I choose this. Okay. So for instance, right, the, the main difference will be you know that by default the post processing and always not loading this one. This is you know this the thing that is going to slow, slow down everything. So let me just load these two patches. Oh, I forgot here the decompose case. Uh, actually, also I can see it's a little bit slow there. Okay, I want to access the compose. And then the fill, so let's see what pressure has to say. So you see, very, very nice your pressure fill. And there you go. You have your solution, everything within Nova, uh, way much better than the one you get with Snappy and an easy to use uh, GUI. Okay. Um, let's let's wait until we reach 60 you know, and then we can i can stop it i will do it in the brutal way well, actually so far it's the only way i know and i'll close that window and okay so i will go here what is this one um boom Boom, bottom bin. I stop there. Okay. Uh, okay, I stop. No processes, everything, nothing is running, and I save in the mesh. And just to end, because I have, have things to do, we are going to move to this post process here. Okay, now in post process, you have your solution. You can access everything here, but to open the post process, you there open file and you need to access this. Okay. And now it's going to access everything that you have in this folder. Now you have the solution. So hopefully it save 60. Okay. So you have everything in exactly the same way, but you saw that it was quite fast. It's quite fast because it's not loading everything. Okay, everything it is in, in, on the on demand, so it's not very intuitive, I have to say. But well, if you don't want to use the other, and you want to stay here. So, for instance, and now I want to see in the motorbike view. Okay, now let me here. Okay, and it's color, it's color field, and I want to see pressure there. So you select the pressure, and you have it there. Okay, you have the power the color palette there. So you right click, you edit, and then you select this one and you can put your rank, the different range there and so on. So having this one also, you can go and say, okay, I want to create a, a slide plot there and normal to this, you put it there. So see, there's a little bit more faster, a little bit noise. I have to say it's much faster than, than working in part of them, but you don't have all the tools, all that stuff there. So you can do some basic stuff. Okay, so there you go. Streamline the, the coupling velocities. So basically user parts, you know, the, the most important one, you have a slide, you have click plot, ISO surfaces, thresholds, so 2D graph, plotting velocity song, take your images. This is your, oh, your, your, your time time control okay so you can change okay here the time step so you can do your animation everything here so bam 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 what i'm missing yeah that's all i think whether it's everything now you can compare your solutions you have our beautiful nice mesh uh, actually can i see the mesh in that cut plane let's see a size the view oh, okay surface views okay you have it there i didn't know Okay, actually I always use the, 
Bara from what I do admit that uh, this one tends to be a little bit faster, but yeah, it's not loading all the plugins, doesn't load everything. So, okay, so see the very nice mesh, just to stress good quality boundary meshes all the time at the first try. So, you have this video with all the steps of for those interests that you try to reproduce this and try to fix those errors that we have in the mesh. So, as we go back and all that, I cannot. Right, here so this one okay mesh okay what happened oh, okay it's I need to load everything so okay let me go and load uh, this one okay mm, or probably if I have time I don't have as I don't have the desire to do this, uh, it's standard for me, the motor by I already know what is happening, so solving that issue, and you see that the simulation runs at this, a bit of a problem, so let's open there, so uh, here, okay, so CM, okay, so Open from was telling that this one was 84, which is a sector for me that is a very good value, but say that in all ways it's telling 84. So, as I say, it tends to be a little bit more conservative open from, but yeah, always check that stuff. Okay, it's saying for, for the excuseness. Let's see what it's telling about excuseness. So, also, tonality, excuseness, this is aspect ratio, this is volume that can be important now, you know that. It's not recommended to have volume very close to zero, so you can monitor where are those cells that usually those very small volumes can be directly related to orthogonality. This is minimum distance, and this is a quality that is a mixture between all this stuff. Okay, so as you look at, look at excuses, we have a maximum excuses of 6.9 here, it's telling you, so see, there's a little bit more now here, but it's there, it's, it's telling you so. Uh, open phone predicted a larger this is a smaller instead for orthogonality was the opposite okay so yeah i think i cover everything i hope you now you get an idea the importance of you you having the, this visual references now on doing the meshes uh i just covered this one and yeah okay let me go uh, as i say i, I I can be the whole day doing this stuff. So the last part just to show you, to show you string wrap, no, the same that is closer to what you, you, you have in, in open phone. So we play with this one. We have this, remember that you have auctions. So let's use the full auctions. And you are going to see that basically, okay, erase everything. This can be time consuming, by the way, to get that, that topology. Uh, messages where uh, this is also can be a little bit messy. Okay. Oh, yeah. So basically, there you go. So this is what, what is you doing? Okay. It wasn't that time consuming. Okay. So I bit my tongue. Okay. So I see that it basically is wrapping a surface mesh around your body using all these parameters. You, you have global parameters that are always valid, but now we have more specific. Okay, so basically here it is doing a lot of the featuring, okay? So actually it worked much better than Snappy that it, it joined those surfaces, but it's not as nicer as the as the topology base. So this mesh by no means is the one that you, you, you need to use now. So. So after you do this surface wrapper, your next step will be this one, remesh. So this one is doing a re-triangulation, okay, or remeshing of this wrapping that you, you compute here. So first you do this one, and then click this one, that this one tends to be consuming, and then we're going to see that we're going to have a, a much nicer mesh. After you have this, the, you wrap your surface, your whole domain, everything, the next steps are exactly the same as this previous one. So you do your boundary layer, your tetra poly, whatever. Okay. And there you go. So see that they have something we wrap, but recall that the, the previous one, and actually we have it here. And I think 
let me open the tether oh just the surface this one so in this one that is the topology base see that all those features small features that is trying to solve all, all that stuff okay instead using this one that i don't recall okay this one it's not the resolving those features no we have it there what the hell is happening there okay so this one okay and then you go here capture all your features everything okay so you are defeating by using surface wrapper so sometimes it's better to use this one sometimes not but you have it there uh i don't recall if you do your mesh in this one the volume mesh is going to be a super good one i don't know but here visually i already can see some some problems here so these cells here are going to be problematic and also look at that remember that you have here the breaks didn't manage to resolve very well as the topology base method okay but as you, you you put there on top of that the boundary layer is going to work here boundary layer you have warranty that it works fine all the time the first try but then you will have the issues of colliding layers that you will need to iterate there to get that okay but it's not as nicer as the as the topology base so you have here the exhaust pipe see that this one is resolved very well no topology base then here it's not so nice but even this one that is not so nice way much better than what you have in a snappy and i am i don't want to modify a snappy no it's a good tool but we have a bit a better tool now okay um bam, 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 just to show you there the cut plane there you go okay good meshes boundary layer meshes prismatic measure all the time at the first time so yeah guys so with this i need to leave you so i hope it wasn't too long and i hope you follow the whole video to see everything i talk about so as i say this this is mesh education okay so this will be in a small corner to address every issue related to meshing not only for cfd okay remember that meshing can be people doing 3d printing they use this nasty stl that i really hate also people doing creative work animations blender I'm working a lot with Blender, okay, and also using a new tool called Cascader, very nice. So doing some body animations or some specific <laughs> simulations. So we're going to ad address a lot of stuff, even solid modeling. So stay tuned for more videos. If you have requests, let, let me know in the, in the comment section and, uh, and have a nice time. See you next time. Bye bye.